all right, we are going to get started here. So this is Lakehead University webinar series. Thanks for joining us. And today's all about the Lakehead life and student success. So before we begin, Lakehead University respectfully acknowledges its campuses are located on the traditional lands of the four of the Indigenous people. Lakehead Thunder Bay is located on the traditional land of the first William Fort, sorry, the Fort William First Nation signatory to the Robinson Superior Treaty of 1850. Lakehead Aurelia is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe. Bay. The Anishinaabe Bay include the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. Lakehead University respectfully acknowledges the history that many nations hold in the areas surrounding our campuses and is committed to a relationship with First Nation, Métis, and Inuit peoples based on principles of mutual trust, respect, reciprocity, and the collaboration of spirits and reconciliation. So without further ado, we are using Zoom today. And when you are asking a question, there is going to be a little Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom. So if you have a question throughout the presentation, feel free to click that. And we'll be trying to answer some of them behind the screens, as well as we'll have a live Q&A option as well. And so without further ado, my name is Abby Rose Arnold, and I'm a recruitment officer here at Lakehead uh, for both Aurelia and the Thunder Bay campus. Hello everyone, my name is Hartley Mendelson. I'm a student success advisor on the Thunder Bay campus with a big part of my portfolio being advising students on their academic success with their academic skills, planning orientation and transition and student experience programming and the leadership development program. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Lovett and I use she, her pronouns. I am Delighted to be the Director of Career Services and Co-op for Lakehead. I'm based at the Aurelia campus, but the team that I work with spans both campuses. We have um, information and services at Thunder Bay and Aurelia that I'm looking forward to telling you more about tonight. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Cahill. I'm the Manager of Student Accessibility Services um, on both the Thunder Bay and Aurelia campus. Our office provide supports and services to students with disabilities or medical conditions and I'm happy to be here tonight to share a little bit more about uh, a little bit more information with you um, on how students can access uh, supports and services from our office. Amazing thank you everyone so yes just to get started we are one of Canada's top 10 universities uh, for primarily undergraduate according to Maclean's we're also um, number one for uh, non-for-profit research income. And then we do fall within the top two undergraduate research universities and top 5% in the entire world. Something I love to share is that we have $11 million in scholarships and bursaries handed out annually. We have about 65 plus degree options with 100% experiential learning. And 82% of our classroom sizes are actually 50 students or less, which is really important when it comes to that one on one relationship that you will have with your professors, they will call you by name, you'll call them by name, and it's kind of makes for almost better learning. We also have 97.7% employment rate within two years of graduation, which actually is above the provincial standard. So without further ado, we'll get started. And Hartley, if you wanted to take it away. Hello, everyone. As I mentioned, I'm a student success advisor as part of the Student Success Center. And I'll share with you all about what that is um, as we move to the next slide here. So at the Student Success Center, we have a location both in Thunder Bay and in Aurelia. Um, uh, we have four main pillars for what we do. do. So the first one is orientation and transition programming. So that's for all first year students who have now accepted their offer. They're coming to Lakehead and joining us. Um, we have a bunch of online programming and other programming before their arrival on campus. And then the second they get here, we have programming all the way from the first day up until the first six weeks to help them transition and ease their transition to the university. Um, and then we also have lots of student experience programming. So just fun. Uh, engaging events to help students uh, climatize themselves socially and academically, uh, be mindful of their 
uh, mental health and uh, other awareness programs to support them, which leads me into my next pillar here, which is general lakehead navigation and support. So we like to think of ourselves as a triage service at the university. Um, if a student doesn't know where to go, they don't know who to contact, they don't know how to get in touch with the appropriate department, we are a great resource for you. Um, reach out to our office, uh, swing by our office. We're happy to walk with you, um, provide those introductions and make sure that you're getting the support you need. Um, and if you want it to be a little bit more anonymous, we have a support program, um, which is accessed online that people can submit their questions and we'll provide the answers. On top of that, we have an academic support zone. So our academic support zone in Thunder Bay is located in the library on the second floor. In Aurelia, it's part of our Student Success Center office. Um, and our academic support zone provides academic skills, tutoring and writing support, and much more. I'll get into more details later on. And we also offer a leadership development programming. Um, our program is called Level Up Leadership, and it offers lots of opportunity for volunteerism, developing leadership skills, and connecting people with their mentors, and much more. So we'll get into the specifics now as we move on. Um, so our my, uh, starting off with our My Support program. Um, the My Support program is basically providing resources and supports beyond the classroom. So when students have questions, they can reach out through our form. Um, I'll tell you how to access that form in just a second. Uh, and this form basically gives students an opportunity to list any questions they have about anything at the university. And we'll be sure to be in touch usually within that day, but always within the first uh, 24 hours of uh, in one business day to get back to you. Um, so it's always timely and it's always great when you don't know where to go. Our support form is a great resource. Um, our team always connects people with the appropriate tools and resources to help people succeed in their studies or also improve their uh, personal well-being. Um, and beyond that, we also will make introductions for you. So if you don't know who to contact, how to contact them, we're happy to make those, those transition conversations happen. Um, and basically the programs in place to help students get back on track wherever they are in their post-secondary journey, not just academically, but also personally. Um, so for accessing our form, as we move to the next slide here, um, there's two ways to access the form and contact the My Support team. So, well, really three ways. The third one, which isn't listed here, is visiting us in person. Um, but option one, uh, students can log in um, to their uh, My, uh, sorry, option one on the, on the screen, uh, lakehead.ca slash My Support. Um, there's a button that says connect me with the My Support team. And then there's a form to fill out and our team will usually respond within one business day. Option two is actually logging into your My Portal account using your Lakehead username and password. And then that navigation menu, you will click the academics option under the My Support heading. You'll click the My Support form, complete the form. And like I said, our team will usually be in touch within one business day. So that's how to access the form. It's pretty simple. Um, and many times students who access the forum also sometimes visit us in person and we're always happy to get you that support that you need. Um, always welcome to also give us a call or send us an email. So next up we have orientation and student experience. So if you're not familiar, orientation and transition programming is really all about helping new incoming first year students adjust to university life, perhaps adjust to their new city in Thunder Bay or Aurelia. Uh, and just get acclimated with university level learning. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, more about our orientation and student experience program. We'll move on to the next slide here. Um, so our orientation programming really focuses on almost everything that fits under the student life cycle, helping new students to transition to, to Lakehead. So we help students build community through lots of our different activities and programs, but not just the campus community, also their new community in Thunder Bay and Aurelia connecting with local organizations, businesses. Um, some of them are very involved in a lot of our events and others we would take excursions to bring students out uh, into, our, our, into their new cities um, to uh, see what's out there and get acclimated with their new town. 
We also help people prepare academically. We have a number of uh, events surrounded around uh, academic skills work workshops, some about how to navigate the library and using the library as a resource for your studies um, and much more. Uh, we have uh, events and activities surrounded around familiarizing oneself with their new campus. So on top of just uh, the events and activities, we also conduct campus tours. Um, we have campus tours running all summer as well throughout that first week of school. Um, and we have a booking system for that, which, uh, which you can check out online and uh, see what works for you if you're ever in town and maybe we don't have a tour posted, just reach out to us and we'll be happy to accommodate. Um, we have a number of events and activities surrounded around uh, health and well-being. Um, for example, every single Wednesday for the first six weeks, we have Well You Wednesday programming. So these are different events targeting uh, support for mental health or just general well-being in, gen uh, in general. Um, we also have events surrounded around taking care of your student business. So a lot of our communications before you get to university will help give you the checklist and the tools for how to uh, properly prepare for coming to university from the business side. So that includes your scholarships, course registrations, everything related to that sort of student business area. Um, Jessica will touch on this a lot more, um, but there's a number of events and activities surrounding around building your for your future, um, different types of career development workshops, uh, career fairs and such. Um, and a big, big feature of almost everything we do is making those social connections, not just with your peers in university and other students, but also with faculty, student service departments, and the various staff uh, that will be helping you throughout your academic journey. So we'll move on to the next slide here. So talking a little bit about um, more about the student experience here at Lakehead. Um, I'll touch on a couple of these different pieces. Um, if you're not familiar, LUSU is our Lakehead University Student Union. And as a student at Lakehead, you are automatically part of that union. And a big portion of the union is the clubs and societies. So we have over 100 different clubs on campus, um, everything from an anime club to a uh, engineering club, uh, everything in between. Um, there's also a number of societies which are more academic focused clubs. Um, and then we also have uh, five different LUSU centers like Pride Central, Gender Equity Center, Indigenous Student Resource Center, and a couple of others. Um, on top of that, there's a number of different intramural sports and athletic opportunities for students to get involved and sign up for. And um, that's run out of, uh, out of uh, some of our different sporting locations on campus. Um, great opportunity to get involved and participate in, uh, you know, Thunderwolf spirit. Um, we have a number of events around exploring Thunder Bay and Aurelia, the city, getting familiar with what's out there, connecting with a number of our different partner organizations and sponsors and local businesses, getting familiar with your new surrounding environment. Um, part of our leadership programs, we also offer lots of volunteer opportunities. So there's so many different ways to get involved, not just with uh, student experience events, but also with some of the departments and some of their activities and events that are happening. Uh, we offer a number of workshops to help develop those leadership skills. We also have a number of student appreciation days, so usually surrounded around Halloween. For those that have watched Festivus, there's, uh, for those that have watched Seinfeld, we have a big Festivus event that's been a staple at Lakehead for a number of years. Um, we celebrate Valentine's Day and Wolfie, our mascot, we celebrate their birthday as well. So those are our big student appreciation events. And then we have a number of unique event experience, you know, uh, whether you're in Thunder Bay in the north or in a really a little bit north of the GTA, there's some unique opportunities. We've done dog sledding on campus, dog sledding off campus, excursions to treetop, treetop trekking, had petting zoos on campus. We have, we have uh, had puppy yoga, but we also have therapy dogs every week. Um, there's so many opportunities to get involved, and both of our campuses have on-campus ice rinks, outdoor, outdoor hockey rinks. So it's pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot going on uh, with the student experience, and if you ever have an idea for an event that you'd love to see on campus, we'd love to hear from you and try to make it happen. So we'll move on to the next slide here, talking a little bit more about uh, 
the academic side of what we do from our office. So like I mentioned in Thunder Bay, our academic support zone is located on the second floor of the library. Uh, but you can also access our resources from our main office. And in Aurelia, the academic support zone is intertwined with our student success on our office. So you can access those supports there. Um, talking a little bit more about what the academic support zone does. Um, so there's lots of academic skill building. So you can either book a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment with a student success advisor like myself um, or one of our other advisors. And this can go through a number of different avenues. So some of the skill building resources that we offer, time management, reading and note taking, exam and test preparation, study skills. Usually these are quite different than what students are used to coming from elementary and high school. Um, so there's a little bit of an adjustment phase and we do everything that we can to help students achieve academically in, in the university level of learning. Um, the big thing that I'll, I'd like to point out here is to book early and not wait until you're sort of in trouble in your classes and trying to play catch up. It's always great to just get a, a fresh outlook on how to approach your studies uh, as you prepare for classes rather than once classes have already begun. But of course, we're always helpful. Uh, hope we're always able to help you wherever you're at in that process and help get you back on track uh, with these different types of skill building uh, advising sessions. We also offer group workshops for them as well um, in our academic support zones. Part of our academic support zone, we also offer tutoring services. So students can use our tutor services. These are free program-based drop-in group tutoring. So students can utilize an unlimited number of tutoring hours from our drop-in group tutoring. These are faculty-based. Um, so if you are a student in, let's say, applied life sciences, we have a tutor that's taken a number of different courses in that area and they're able to assist you. Um, and if you don't find your program on there, just reach out to us and we'll help connect you with an upper year student who has a little bit more experience. Um, our tutors are recommended by faculty members um, and they are, uh, they, they've had lots of success in their classes. Um, so it gives students an opportunity to connect and learn from upper year students. Uh, I always like to suggest, look at the tutor schedule, add it to your calendar. They're on Zoom, but they also have drop-in in person. Um, but add that to your calendar and whether you attend it or not, at least it's always there if you ever do need it. And it's always great to ask um, how to prepare for an exam in that type of program um, because exams and tests differ from program to program. So hearing from an upper year student who's been through it uh, can be very helpful. And then specifically for courses, we do have a tutor directory uh, where a student can look up a specific course that they're in and find a private tutor. So those will be one-on-one -on -one sessions. Typically those are paid, um, negotiated with the tutor. Um, but that's an option as well. I always like to recommend attending the free uh, program-based drop-in tutoring first. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about student leadership here. So like I said before, we have a new program that's called Level Up Leadership. It just launched last year. Uh, we have about 100 total participants between our two campuses and it continues to grow each day. On top of that, we have a number of community partners that we that have been growing each day as well. Um, so talking a little bit more about that, we'll get into the next slides here. So our leadership program is really there to support a student in whatever avenues they wanna develop their leadership skills in. So we have three sort of main pillars in this. Those are learn, act, and explore. Through learning, we have a number of different workshops that cover a wide range of topics uh, for students to engage in in-depth skill-based learning related to different leadership uh, uh, related to different leadership styles, uh, some of which are you know communication, uh, some of which are more student-based, like supporting students in distress um, and other topics like that. But also we give the opportunity for our leaders to develop a new workshop, that they can help facilitate and run and develop their skills and get more comfortable um, running, running a session. Um, through our program, students are able to gain co-curricular record, uh, uh, record credit. 
If you're not familiar with the co-curricular record, this is an additional transcript from your academic transcript and it tracks all of your volunteer and leadership positions that you've held from the first day you've joined Lakehead up until your graduation. Um, it's a really great opportunity to help you build your uh, either resume or cover letter or possible future applications to graduate or medical schools, um, things like that. Uh, part of our leadership program, acting. So lots of on-campus involvement through action, um, getting involved in a number of different activities and events that we have, helping out, helping plan stuff is a great way to get involved. We also offer lots of opportunity to support our orientation initiatives. So as you go through your orientation and transition programming, you might find that there's something you really enjoyed and you'd like to make an impact on future students. So volunteering and helping us out with that. We also have a number of community partners that uh, offer us volunteer opportunities to participate and get more connected in the community, but possibly also find something that you're a little bit more passionate about um, to help you make those connections and get involved. We also have uh, exploration as part of our programming. So we have a number of different social and networking opportunities for students. Uh, we have self-guided activities and self-reflection, goal setting, and then not listed on here, we do have passion projects. So if there's something that a student's really passionate about, something that doesn't exist on campus, possibly an event, a fundraiser, we help make that happen through our leadership program. So it's really great to get involved. Uh, and you, uh, you can be as involved as you want and participate how you want to participate. So it's really tailored towards each individual student. And if you do have any questions or something comes up, um, of course, right now, you can drop them in the Q&A on the Zoom. Um, but if you want to reach us, our Thunder Bay campus um, contact information is on the left side. Our Aurelia is on the right side. Um, I, we can type them in the chat if anyone has any questions or wasn't able to jot these down. I can post them in the chat. Um, just let me know. Um, we're always happy to answer any questions or assist with anything that you may need. Um, and if you don't know where to go or who to ask, we are a great resource for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and we're usually really quick at getting that response uh, to you. So like I said, don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to answer anything. Uh, and I think that's it for me right now, but I will be around if you do have any questions. Thanks, Hartley. Um, so Hartley and Abby Rose both mentioned a few things about our great opportunities within career services and co-op. And so it's my pleasure to share just a little bit more information about that and what that looks like at Lakehead. When Abby Rose was talking about the fact that 100% of our programs has have experiential learning, what that really means is that you'll have opportunities within your program curricular connected opportunities, which means four credit opportunities, in which you'll have experiences that you can connect later into the meaningful world of work. So what that looks like can vary according to what program that you are in. And experiential learning is something that's typically faculty led within the classroom. So it could look like a case assignment where a group of students work together collaboratively on a project connected to something that really is happening in industry. Or it could look like a field excursion where the faculty would take students outside of the classroom to do some work connected to what they're studying and results in a project of some kind. So hands-on learning, it could also look like a laboratory, a lab or, um, the applied part of something that you begin to study in a theoretical way. Experiential learning also encompasses this thing we call work integrated learning. And that's kind of like fingers and thumbs. Everything, work integrated learning and experiential learning are all fingers, but only work integrated learning is work integrated learning. It's the thumb of experiential learning, if that makes sense. It may not, so forgive me if it didn't make sense. But uh, work integrated learning is like experiential learning in that it's connected to your program. You do it for credit, but it involves a third party, industry or an employer. So that could be, if you're in a social work program, for instance, a placement. Or if you're in a computer sciences program, it could look like a cooperative work term. So again, depending on your program, what your work integrated learning opportunity looks like may differ. And if you're ever not sure, you can come into the career zone 
and ask one of our team about the experiential learning and work integrated learning elements of your program and how those can be connected to your future career support, your, your future career success. The Career Zone at Thunder Bay offers in person workshops, uh, engagements with employers, one on one appointments, and just help with your general questions about your job search or your resume, for instance. We also connect you with opportunities for career exploration and transferable skills. We do the same thing in Aurelia campus, although our career zone is shared with the academic support zone, as Hartley mentioned a bit earlier. And in Aurelia, the career zone activities take place out of our first floor residence meeting space. So we have dedicated space on both campuses where we conduct essential employment related activities. We help you with your job search, and that could be for something you require for your program, uh, or it could be for something you just need to do in your part time or you wish to do in your part time while you're studying. We also offer support for summer job searching and graduate job searching. We maintain a job bank for co op students as well as for all students and alumni and that job bank is populated with hundreds of opportunities from employers in our region in Ontario. And in fact, even some national employers and international employers who would like to access Lakehead student talent. And over the course of each semester, we offer career fairs, networking events, industry information events, a lot of opportunities to allow students to explore the careers that are connected to their programs. Uh, if I could have the next slide, please. If you're interested in a cooperative education program, um, you're, you're in good company. Co-op ensures that you have the opportunity to do professional paid work terms throughout the year. And depending on your program, that could be a, a short four month experience, or it could be eight, 12, or even 16 months, um, depending again on your program and the work opportunity that you have presented to you. While you're on your work term, you re receive an opportunity to connect in with our co-op program administrator, we'll do what we call a monitor visit. So we check in with you, we check in with your employer, we see how things are going, and we offer you that additional support. And that's why co-op is such a great option for many students, is they know that while they step into the world of work, they have a um, what I would describe as a low risk opportunity to explore the career. And they know that they have us for any kind of coaching, if there's any challenges that you encounter along the way, um, just learning about how to engage. Uh, as a professional within the workplace. But as I mentioned earlier, all of our programs offer experiential opportunities and many um, programs offer work integrated learning in addition to co-op. Work integrated learning is a really broad topic, a broad field and experiential learning is too. So you can learn more about our services in, in career services and co-op at the website that we've provided here. And you can see some things um, on our tools and resources page that are open to everyone, whether they're registered students or not. And it gives you an idea of some of the services and supports that are um, that we offer over the course of the year, as well as some access right now to some tools about careers connected to programs that you might be considering. And I had one more thing that I wanted to share. Oh, yes. When you become an alumni of Lakehead, you can still access career services for coaching career transition advising, job search support, interview prep. We're here for Lakehead alum forever. So we do support alumni as well as current students. So both our, both our departments fall under student affairs um, and we use the same social media uh, for for our different campuses. Um, so if you wanna connect with us, you can connect with us at Lakehead Life. Um, we have that for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok now actually. And for Aurelia, we are Lakehead Life OR, both on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hi everyone uh, and welcome tonight and I just wanted to introduce myself again I'm Nancy Cahill from the Office of Student Accessibility Services. Um, we, we have offices on both the Aurelia and the Thunder Bay campuses 
And as I mentioned earlier, our office provides supports and services to students with disabilities or medical conditions. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about the process of accessing those accommodations and, um, and to support you in your education. So as I mentioned, Student Accessibility Services or SAS, and I will refer to our office to Student Accessibility Services as SAS for the remainder of the presentation, just so you know. But our, our office sets up academic accommodations for students with permanent or temporary disabilities and or medical conditions. The SAS staff collaborates with students, faculty, and staff in developing strategies for a successful learning experience while maintaining the academic standards and integrity of the university. SAS offers a supportive atmosphere where our services are delivered in a respectful, confidential manner. And as I mentioned, SAS provides support to students who may have permanent disabilities, such as ADHD or learning disabilities, mental health disabilities, or sensory types of disabilities like vision, low vision, or hearing loss. We also provide supports to students who may have a temporary disability or medical condition, such as a concussion, um, broken bones, um, or you may be having surgery, or you're waiting for a diagnosis. It's also important to know that all of the information regarding your disability or medical condition is kept confidential within SAS. Being registered with SAS is not documented on any of your official university records, transcripts, or graduation documents. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, the supports, one of the, the main supports that we provide to students is in the form of academic accommodations. And academic accommodations are meant to remove barriers and level the playing field for students with temporary or permanent disabilities or medical conditions. They are determined to, to support students, a student's functional limitations in a way that they in a way that they are individualized. And accommodations ensure help to ensure that students can fully participate in their classes while ensuring dignity and respect for privacy and confidentiality of the students a private health condition. It's important to note that this is done while meeting the essential requirements and maintaining the academic integrity of your course. Accommodations do not modify any part of the program. They accommodate students. They accommodate. So as I on this slide, you'll notice I've listed some, some examples of accommodations. So for example, some students may have in-class accommodations such as you know, access to class notes or audio recording of your lectures. Um, they may require alternate format of their textbooks. And some students may use assistive technology um, for screen reading programs or, 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 or text-to-voice programs such as Kurzweil or Dragon. And then there's test and exam accommodations that students may utilize. They may have disability-related breaks during their tests or exams. They may write their exams in a different location um, where there's a distracted, reduced environment. And they may have some extra time for their tests and exams. And also there's, uh, there could be tolerance of grammar and spelling errors. It's just important to note that all of these accommodations are based on the individual's um, disability or medical condition and they're individualized. So no two um, accommodation plans will be the same. They're all different. They all are dependent on the individual um, student. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, accommodations um, are, are, are based on your, your documented disability or functional limitations. And it's important for us to be able to determine accommodations based on up-to-date current doc, valid documentation that you would provide us. So there's many different types of documentations that student can, students can provide us with um, that identify functional limitations that you're experiencing in, in your education. Some of these could be like a psychoeducational assessment that you may have had during your, your education, um, a neurological assessment. There could be medical documents, 
Um, student Accessibility Services has a specific medical documentation form that students have completed for us, which is really helpful because it identifies functional limitations that are causing barriers to your learning. And we want to set up accommodations to, um, to uh, remove those barriers. Sometimes it may be a doctor's note, or there could be other medical reports as well that can help us determine academic accommodations. And we often meet with students to talk about what kind of documentation um, you may need to get. Um, we are happy to, to um, assist students with, uh, with um, securing that documentation. Next slide, please. So next steps, it's important you know, if a student, if you're, if you, you know, uh, registered, you, you've accepted your offer and you want to get more information about some, uh, some supports from our office, make an appointment for initial consultation. You know, we can meet with you, an accessibility advisor will review your documentation or identify documentation requirements that you may need. We can discuss some accommodations and support that may be available for you and assess academic and technology needs. It's important to, to think about you know, what kind of technology you utilized in your, in your previous education, and you may need to utilize that as well. We can also ask, answer any other questions that you have in regards to um, you know, academic accommodations and um, the kind of documentation requirements that you will need. And more than likely, we always a second appointment will be required because we'll need to formalize your academic accommodations and provide them to your classes, to your, to your faculty. Next slide, please. So you know that the, once you you know if uh, if you will have more questions for us, um, we'd like you to reach out to our office. As I mentioned, we have um, offices on both the Thunder Bay and Aurelia campus. We have um, our, our email address is uh, sas at lakeedu.ca um, and uh, in Thunder Bay and or access uh, at lakeedu.ca in Aurelia. And as I mentioned, the supports are available. Um, we, we look forward to hearing from you and I would encourage students to reach out with any questions they have um, in regards to accessing academic accommodations um, for, your, uh, for your, your, your journey at Lakehead. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. If people, if folks have a question, feel free. I'm happy to answer any. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nancy, Jessica, and Hartley. So it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, but we're going to jump into the next steps and kind of finish up, wrap up this presentation. And if we do have any questions in the Q&A box, we will answer them live. So again, just a reminder, if you do have any questions for uh, Nancy, Jessica, or Hartley, now's your time to kind of drop in uh, the Q&A box and ask some questions before the end of the presentation. So moving on with some important dates. Uh, we had a deadline of June 1st to accept your offer of admissions, but you actually still can accept your offer today. Uh, we had a bit of a, a mess up with our, our website so and our uh, payment system. So yes, you can still accept your offer today if you haven't already. And then just another important date that you would want to kind of put in your calendar is June 30th is coming up really, really soon. That is our entrance bursary deadline. So if you haven't already applied for entrance bursaries, and it's not just for um, first years. It's not just for high school students. It's for any students, um, mature transfer students, whatever that may be. So just make sure that you apply for that before June 30th. Other than that, you can book a campus tour. If you haven't already come to the campus in either Thunder Bay or Norelia, I heavily encourage you to come check it out. Check what we are all about. Um, if you scan the QR code on the top right hand corner, you can actually book a tour there. Um, or you can go on our website, actually, and in the top right-hand corner, there's going to be a little search engine, and you just put uh, Thunder Bay Campus Tour, Campus Tour, or really a Campus Tour, whatever that may look like for you, and then it's going to ask you to fill out um, several questions, and then, yeah, so I know that uh, the Thunder Bay Tour takes roughly around two, two and a half hours to complete, uh, because it is a bigger campus, and then the Aurelia um, Campus Tour is about an hour, two an hour and a half. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend it. Um, you know, Thunder Bay and Aurelia are both really gorgeous, pretty little small towns. So come check it out, especially if you're going to be committing to living the next four years of your life here. Other than that, we want to encourage everyone to get social with us. 
So you can follow us um, at My Lakehead at, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Because today's session is being recorded, it will be uploaded to YouTube later on this week. So go ahead, pull out your phones, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and whatnot. Other than that, I wanted to thank you for all of the presenters presenting today. And thank you for all of the participants for being here with us. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be here to answer them. And I think we're going to try and maybe do a live Q&A. We'll see. So one of the questions is, can you speak about the FastPass programs? Um, today's webinar is not about FastPass, but I can mention that um, you can find all of our FastPass programs on our website. So if you just go into the upcoming events, and there should be one um, coming up in the near future with the whole FastPass. So if you, you know, if you've missed one already, don't worry, we have another one coming up. Um, you can also, if you have questions about FastPass, you can reach out to um, Jack Hughes. Yeah, Jessica, I see that you have your hand up. I would just offer that at the Aurelia Campus FastPass uh, programs, I've been a big part of those over the last week and I'll be continuing or a member of my team will be there at those. Um, similar to tonight's session, we talk about all the services available, but then the great, the great next step is that you can actually get help, one-on-one -on -one help to register for your classes. So I'm um, I wonder, Abby Rose, if it's the same up in Thunder Bay, uh, but definitely it's it's quite a, a good event to go, to go to, especially if you're having any challenges registering or you're not sure what your next steps are with respect to what you should register in. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so if you haven't done all so already, definitely sign up for one of those fast pass programs. Thank you, Jessica. All right, so it looks like that is the end of our questions here. So I just want to say thank you again for everyone coming out and participating in this today's webinar. We appreciate it. And we're looking forward to seeing you this fall. Take care.